Say good afternoon, Abby. Hello, everybody. Get situated real quick. All right, so this is going to be a little bit different topic than what I normally cover. But what I want to tell you today is that a Proverbs 31 woman is a real estate investor. Okay, I... I keep hearing, you know, be a Proverbs 31 woman, be a Proverbs 31 woman. And what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, you know, there's tons of Bible studies about how to be a Proverbs 31 woman. Okay. And I will tell you that I've got, <laughs> I've got the Bible studies. I've got the notebooks. I've got all the stuff that goes with being a Proverbs 31 woman. And I love them all. Okay. But my favorite, absolute favorite uh, Proverbs 31 verse that everybody preaches. Okay. It is the one that says, it's actually verse 16. It says she goes to inspect a field and she buys it. And I use the NLT. Okay. So she goes to inspect a field and she buys it. That's a Proverbs 31 woman. So what it says is a Proverbs 31 woman is a real estate investor. 3116 says she goes to buy, she goes to inspect a field and she buys it. It doesn't say that she goes to inspect a field, then she goes home to ask her husband what he thinks about it. Mm -mm. It says she goes to inspect a field and she buys it. Then it says, it, it also doesn't say she goes to inspect a field, then she calls her daddy and he comes over to inspect it and he tells her what he thinks she should do with it. No, it doesn't say that. It says a Proverbs 31 in verse 16, a Proverbs 31 woman says she goes to inspect a field and she buys it. It doesn't say she goes and asks her Sunday school class and all those other women what they think she should do. She buys it. Now she does her research. She does her homework. It doesn't talk about all that, but she goes to inspect a field and she buys it. A Proverbs 31 woman is a real estate investor. Okay. And to me, there's not a more clear verse in the Bible, except when it says he wept, when Jesus wept, right? Short and sweet. What did he do? He wept. He cried. Okay. Proverbs 31, 16 says she goes to inspect a field and she buys it. That's it. Done. That, that is the end of it right there. And if I know everybody has a favorite Bible verse, okay? That is clearly my favorite Bible verse is Proverbs 31, 16. She goes to inspect a field and she buys it. So a, a lot of, you know, the big name women, prophecy, prof, prof, that word, and, um, you know, Joel Olstein and his wife and uh, Sandy Kraskowski and all of these people teach all of these great and wonderful things. And all of these books I have that have been written by wonderful women or, you know, some of them written by men, but it's all on being a Proverbs 31 woman. But in all of these books, in all of everything that I read, and I have watched tons of YouTube videos on it, and I have watched and sat through webinars and calls and everything. And you can go all the way through being a Proverbs 31 woman, okay? Be a virtuous woman. But you're, um, you know, take care of your family. Have stuff for the servant girls to do. Have, you know, warm clothes and, you know, make sure that your husband is, you know, well received at the city gates. And all of this stuff in Proverbs 31 is really, really important. But in all of these books and all of these teachings that I found, it's like they get to this number 16 and they go, ooh, that's real estate. I don't understand real estate. Probably just skip that one. Yeah, y'all go ahead. It says that she inspects a field, so just good luck on that. I don't know what to tell you to do on it, but it says here that you should, so maybe you should think about it. But anyway, going back to what I know about, that's what all those women say. They miss the best verse out of being a Proverbs 31 woman, which says to live your life invest what you can into, you know, this vineyard that's going to grow a generational wealth for you and your family. This is the best verse that I can get out of Proverbs 31. It says that you go, you do your research, you buy your property, you inspect it, you make sure that it's going to, you know, be a good vineyard for you. And then the next part of it says that she plants a vineyard. So she works the field. After she gets this, after she acquires this, after she saves up the money, finds the perfect piece of land, then she works it. 
All right? It doesn't say she calls in help. It doesn't say that she doesn't know what to do when she gets to it. It says that she works it. She has worked her whole life to be a real estate investor. And number 16 is the most powerful thing out of being a Proverbs 31 woman. I absolutely love it. I just adore it. And if you are you know, wanting to be that Proverbs 31 woman. Yes, I think you should care for the kids. I think, <laughs> I think I need to write a book on Proverbs 31, 16. You're right. Um, but I, I know you want to take care of the kids and I know you want to take care of your household, but I also know that you want to provide for your family after you're gone. And real estate is the best way to create that generational wealth. If you buy that field today, then you have it for the rest of your life. You can pass it on to your kids for the rest of their life. It's not like buying them a bike, okay? It's not like buying them a bicycle. It's not like buying them, you know, food. I mean, you could plant a vineyard. She could have easily planted a garden that would have fed her family for the rest of their lives for generations and generations and generations. Now, she chose to plant a vineyard, which is a different story. It's a different tangent altogether, but... She still, in this vineyard, she gave her family a job for the rest of their lives. They could have been the best winemakers. They could have, you know, made uh, vinegar. They could have turned this vineyard into something else throughout the years. But what she did was she went out to inspect a field and she bought it. She set herself apart as a strong woman in the community who knows what she is after, who knows what she can do with her time and her effort and her energy, and she put it all out there. She went to inspect a field and she bought it and you can too, okay? And I know you can and I know it doesn't take a whole great big chunk of money to go inspect a field because I've done it, okay? Let me just tell you, I've got this field. I went to an auction one Saturday morning and I bought a field for $1,500, okay? Maybe you don't have $1,500 right now, but I know in America you can buy an acre of land for $1,500. So if you take 15 months and you save $100 per month, then in 15 months, you have $1,500. And you can go buy a field for this $1,500. No, diff different auction site, Lenny. But you can buy a field for $1,500, okay? And with this field, I put $1,500 into it. I had no idea where it was. I did not do my research on it. It was pretty much a gamble at this point, but I thought, you know, an acre, 1500 bucks, fine, I'll try it, I'll see what I can do now to create some money in the future. So when I got to the closing table for this property, this one acre piece of land, y'all, it turned out I left the auction that day, I went straight down to Decatur, Tennessee. I didn't even know where Decatur, Tennessee was, but I went down there to see what I'd bought, okay? I'm 20 eight years old, I think. I just turned 28 at this point in the story. And so I drove straight down to Decatur, saw what I could find out, and y'all, I bought a piece of land in a gated subdivision, one of those big fancy wrought iron gates. Okay, you gotta have a security code to get into this subdivision. My lot is on the main road though. I have a private entrance to my lot. Okay, but once you get into the subdivision, once you get in, the roads are paved, they've got curbs, they've got sidewalks, they've got uh, lights all the way through. It's got underground utilities. And you know what else my lot has? And every other lot, there's like 100 lots in this subdivision. Every lot has a deeded boat slip. Because this subdivision that I had no idea what I was buying, it's on the river. It's this beautiful, undeveloped piece of paradise in the middle of nowhere, Tennessee and I spent $1,500 on it. So when I got to the closing, I mean, I was absolutely ecstatic, absolutely ecstatic to get this property for $1,500. I mean, this is the very first piece of property I've ever bought by myself, no matter what, like it, it, the only thing I'd ever considered buying, okay? This is what would have allowed me to vote 100 years ago is I owned land. I went to inspect a field and I bought it. I actually just bought it and then went to inspect it, but you know, that's different. So. When I get to the closing table, the woman who had bought it before me at the peak of the market in 06 or 07, when all 100 lots had sold at one great big auction, the cheapest lot had sold for $39,000. $39,000 for the cheapest lot. The woman that had got a mortgage on the lot that I own now had paid $69,000 for that same piece of ground 
that same piece of earth, that same 1.07 acres out in the middle of nowhere, she had signed her name and a bank had financed her for $69,000 and I bought it for $1,500. Y'all, real estate investing is the way, it is the clearest way to residual income, to generational wealth, and it does not take $25,000, okay? You can buy land for $1,500. I bought another piece of land, again, for $1,500, and I turned around and rented it out to my neighbor. I actually don't even rent the land. It's a half-acre lot. I don't rent the land to my neighbor. I rent the driveway. I rent half of my driveway to my neighbor for $250 a month. So it took less than a year for me to get my money back. Less than a year for me to get my $1,500 back on this property that I get to drive by all the time. So $250 just pops into my bank account on the 17th of every month and I don't have to go out and struggle for it. I don't have to work for it. I don't have to do anything for it, okay? And if you save $100 a month, in 15 months, in just over a year, you have the $1,500 to go inspect a field and bought it and buy it. Absolutely, you can go to tax sales, you can buy stuff for $1,000. You do not have to pay off your mortgage to start investing in real estate. My friend Lenise is on here now. I told her one day, I got so excited and I went on a little tangent with her, a little rampage, and I told her that you do not have to pay off your mortgage to start investing in real estate. You actually, while you have that mortgage, you need to have side pots, you have side gigs of real estate investments paying down your mortgage for you. Have tenants that pay down your mortgage for you. Livy's on here today. The first time I talked to her, I told her that I was a real estate investor and I buy houses and all this stuff. And she said that she wanted to buy a house. She wanted to buy a rental house. And I told her the very first time I talked to her, we talked for like 10 minutes. I'm already telling her what to do. <laughs> I said, you need to buy a triplex or a quadplex because you can buy a triplex or a quadplex for the same amount that you can buy a house for. But that money comes back to you by three or four different people. So if you're a young person and you're ready to go inspect a field and buy it, then you need to buy a triplex or a quadplex. Because, think about it this way, if you're paying $500 a month to rent an apartment or something, you could go and sign a note, buy a triplex or a quadplex, don't buy a duplex, it's too small, but buy a triplex or a quadplex and then rent out the other two units the other three units, and you will be living for free. Not only are you living for free, but two or three other people are improving your credit and paying down your mortgage so that after you do this for a year or two and you get your, um, you get your investment money back, say you put 5,000 down on it. That's like what, a semester's worth of tuition and books? Say you put $5,000 down on it, and then a year later you got your $5,000 back, so you can go buy another one, maybe buy a newer one, maybe buy a nicer one. You can either move into the next one, or you can rent it out and have more money coming at you every month so that you can save, and then you buy a third one. Okay, don't buy a duplex. You can, I, I tell people you can start buying houses if you want to, but the money is in triplexes or more. I bought an apartment unit one time. It had five units. Paid $120,000 for it. I bought houses for $120,000 that I get to rent for $800. I rent my fiveplex for $500 per unit. So I get $2,500 off of what I bought another house for that I get $800 for. So y'all tell me, what would you rather have? Would you rather have five units? I mean, same down payment, same everything, everything equal, but you get five units paying you $500 or you get one house with one unit paying you $800. If you want my information, it's WhitneyNicely.com. WhitneyNicely.com. Livy or uh, Lenise, if one of y'all would put up WhitneyNicely.com, that'd be awesome. Thank you so much. Um, but I, I love real estate. I'm all real estate all the time. I've got a radio show. I go on these tangents every Saturday morning. But what I want you to know is that if you want to be a Proverbs 31 woman, okay, Proverbs 31, 16 says she goes to inspect a field and buys it. With her earnings, she plants a vineyard, okay? Go buy the fields. Go buy the fields, Plant a vineyard, plant your residual income, plant your generational wealth, but you have to start buying the real estate. It doesn't say that she goes to ask her husband if she buys the land. 
You can ask him if you want to. That'd probably be a good idea for your marriage. But I go out all the time and buy properties and don't ever tell my husband about it. But that's what I do for a living, okay? I am a broker for Whitney Buys Houses. I don't list properties. I don't do open houses on Sundays. I go to church. But what I do is I buy houses. I buy land. I've got like 40 units right now. And every woman needs real estate. You need a real estate portfolio, okay? I'm going to tell you two reasons you need a real estate portfolio, women. Women are gonna live longer than men. It's scientists, scientifically proven that women are gonna live longer than men. And personally, it has been proven that women spend more money than men, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I spend more money than my husband, okay? I need to make more money if I'm gonna spend more money and I'm gonna live longer than he is, okay? So I need to buy this real estate now. I need to buy it while I'm young. I'm 31 right now. If I can buy 10 or 15 properties a year, then by the time I'm 40, I can retire. Hopefully by the time I'm 35, I can semi-retire, okay? I go out, I speak to different women's groups, I speak to different Christian organizations, and I tell everybody that you need to be buying real estate. You should buy real estate and wait. Do not wait to to buy real estate, you buy real estate and wait, okay? You can make some quick money in real estate, okay? You can you can turn and burn and you can flip and you can flop and you can do whatever you want to, but real estate is really after that five-year goal. What is your 10-year goal? What do you want to leave your kids, okay? And you want to leave them real estate. I know you do because I do and I don't even have kids yet. Okay, a Proverbs 31 woman. Everybody wants to be a Proverbs 31 woman, okay? It's a virtuous woman. It's a smart woman. It's a woman whose husband is honored at the city gates. It's a woman who takes care of herself. She is clothed in dignity and strength, okay? But a Proverbs 31 woman in 16 goes to inspect a field and she buys it. And then she plants a vineyard. She takes care of what she bought. She creates a business out of it. And she, who knows how many vineyards she ends up buying. Who knows where all this residual income and all this property and all of this real estate will take her. You, you can't know, but you have to start. You have to start. You have to buy real estate. And if you're not buying real estate, then you need to be saving to buy real estate. Or you need to be saving so you can get a coach so that you're not making the mistakes that I did when I first started buying real estate. Okay? I just told you about $1,500 that I didn't even inspect. I mean, how crazy is that? Proverbs 31 woman, I should have inspected it. I just went with my gut on it and God saved me. It ended up being a solid investment. If it takes me 10 years and I can sell it for 20 or 30,000, then that's a good return on investment, y'all. Okay? If it takes me 5 years and I can sell it for 10,000, that's still a good return on investment. I can own or finance it for $300 a month and let somebody else build on it, but you can only build quarter million dollar houses on this lot, okay? It's a gated, fancy subdivision. You can't just go throw any old building up on there. You got to follow the codes and the covenants of the subdivision. So I could build a house there and then sell the house and the land. Say I build a quarter million dollar house. I get a loan, build a quarter million dollar house, and I sell it for $300. I had $1,500 in it plus whatever it took me to get the loan to build the house and I sold it and made how much? Who knows? You do not need a license to buy real estate. Anybody over 18 in America can buy real estate. And if you've got that cold hard cash, it is so easy to buy real estate, okay? People make real estate difficult. It is not difficult, okay? I went to an auction. I could have very easily just called the bank. I could have looked in the MLS. I could have looked on Craigslist. There's like, I actually have another little sermon that I do on ways to find off-market properties because the money is in the off-market properties, not the properties that every agent in town has already looked at and listed three or four different times, okay? MLS is not where you're going to find deals. The multiple listing service is not where you're going to find real estate investment deals. You need off-market properties. And I've got a whole little tangent that I go on six or eight different ways to find off-market properties. So you do not need a license. Anybody can do it, especially if you're buying it for cash. If you got $1,500, you can go buy an acre of land today. I know you can. I know I could go buy probably as many as I wanted to if I had the money and I was ready to do it. Oh yeah, it's coming in an ebook. It's coming in a webinar. This is the free version and I hope this message gets 
spread like wildfire on YouTube and Facebook and everywhere. I hope everybody shares this because everybody in America needs a real estate portfolio. And it is so easy to get started in it. The first thing you have to do is say, I can do this. I can be a real estate investor. And then God just opens up the opportunities and he just showers it down on you. But the first step you do is you say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to inspect a field. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to plant that vineyard. I'm going to work the ground. I'm going to work the soil. I'm going to get that residual. I'm going to get that money. I'm going to get all of these things and I'm going to leave it to my kids and they're going to love me and they're going to praise me for it. That's the rest of being a Proverbs 31 woman, right? Because <laughs> your kids love you and honor you. <laughs> your husband is honored at the city gate because you're this real estate investor out here hustling while you know, you're also running your household and cooking and making meals and you're dressed in the fine clothes and everything about being a Proverbs 31 woman. Except in all these books, I think I found one chapter that said to buy real estate. And it was the shortest chapter in the book because the woman who wrote the book was not a real estate investor. She doesn't know how to go out and inspect the field and buy it and plant the vineyard for residual income and generational wealth. I do y'all and it is so much fun. It is so awesome. And as many women as I can tell, as many men as I can tell and convince them that their wives, their daughters, their sisters, their moms need to be real estate investors, they need to be real estate investors, then just, I mean, the better off everything's going to be. I, I, I Obviously, I just get really excited about this. And if you want to get in contact with me, I do this speech in a much calmer, <laughs> relaxed manner. I try not to get so emotional on it, but it's, um, oh, my website, I forgot what I was saying. My website is WhitneyNicely.com, and I do this speech. If you've got a church group that needs to hear this speech or this sermon or whatever you want to call this, I am... I am not a preacher. I'm a real estate investor. I'm a real estate broker, auctioneer. I'm a real estate coach. I do anything and everything. I'm all real estate all the time. That's my radio show. And I would be glad to come speak to your organization or, um, you know, talk to you as a coach or just help you get to the real estate empire that I know everybody needs and wants and deserves. And so many people, all right, I'm 31. So many people come up to me that are my age. They're in my generation. They're in my you know, network of people and they're like, man, I can't wait until I'm older and I can start buying houses. Why are you waiting? You are missing the best opportunity. I sent out an email about this yesterday that said, if you are not positioning yourself as a real estate investor right now, like today, this is May 17th, 2016. It's my high school graduation anniversary. I've been out for 13 years now. If you're not positioning yourself to be a real estate investor right now, you're missing the boat, okay? You know why? Because our parents are the baby boomers, okay? And some of their parents are still alive. They're the uh, greatest generation or whatever they're called. Those old farts have the real estate. The baby boomers have the real estate, okay? My generation, we're not going to buy real estate. As much as I preach and yell and stomp, we're not going to buy real estate. We should be, though, because our parents and our... Um, our grandparents, they've got these real estate portfolios because they understood the importance of buying real estate. People my age, we don't get it. We don't get it because we're not taught how to buy real estate. We're not taught that we shouldn't buy a single family house when we're starting our lives. We should buy a triplex and a quadplex so that by the time our kids are five, we've got a free and clear property that is paying for us to live in this big fancy house. We're not working our nine to five. We're just collecting rent and then paying off our mortgage. Somebody else is making our house payment for us, okay? So if you can start buying real estate now, as those grandparents and those parents start looking at their kids, I'm telling you, my friends' parents do this. They, they call me because their kids, my friends, aren't interested in their real estate portfolio. They aren't interested in the day-to-day -day action of it. They aren't interested in collecting the rent. They aren't interested in getting good tenants. They just aren't interested in it. And I love real estate. So my friend's parents call me and sell me my friend's inheritance. My friend's parents, the baby boomers, call me and sell me their real estate portfolio because their kids aren't interested in it. Y'all, 
Do you realize what I'm saying here? My friend's parents are giving me, selling me my friend's inheritance because my friends are too lazy to get up and go do something. And I love real estate. And I am preaching to them that they should be in, interactive with their parents. Get to know what's going on with your real estate portfolio. This is your inheritance that I'm going to end up with. Go buy some real estate. A Proverbs 31 woman goes to inspect a field and she buys it. She doesn't ask her husband if she can buy it. She doesn't ask her daddy if he thinks it's a good investment, if the roof looks good or if the uh, grass is green or if he thinks the irrigation is going to be great. It's that she goes and inspects a field. She knows what she's looking for. She knows how to work it. She buys it. She plants her vineyard and she creates lifelong income, a lifelong job probably, but she can pass that to her kids. That's what a Proverbs 31 woman does. She does all the other stuff, but primarily in my mind and in my heart, a Proverbs 31 woman is a real estate investor. End of story. So please share this. Please, please, please share this. And if you have a group that needs to hear this message, <laughs> Livy is promoting for me now. Uh, I'll start the uh, $97 program to get in for the eight ways to find profitable real estate deals. <laughs> so anyway, if you have a group, if you have an organization, if it's, um, thank you, WhitneyNicely.com is how you can get a hold of me. And if you have, you know, a real estate portfolio and you have all houses and you're ready to jump into commercial and apartments, or if you are ready and you just want to tiptoe in and you want to do the land deals like I was talking about earlier, that's cool. I can work with you on that. I am the real estate broker for Whitney Buys Houses. I'm a real estate auctioneer for Nicely Done Auctions. I'm a real estate coach, WhitneyNicely.com, and I am a real estate investor, so I buy houses. If you are a baby boomer and your kids don't care about your portfolio, call me, 865-309-4500. I, I speak to four sellers every morning who want to get rid of something. I go to look at 10 houses every week and I make offers. I make cash offers. I make owner financing offers. I make lease option offers. I make offers. I am a buyer. Auctioneers around here love me. I'm not competition because I show up at their auctions and I buy their stuff. Now, if I could get a hold of it sooner, then that'd be cool too, but I am a buyer. So if you have something you want to sell, send it to me. My email is info at I buy and hold. I buy and flip. I buy and... Um, I sign deals, I do lease options, I do creative financing. I, I very rarely, in fact, on my apartments, that is the only bank mortgage I have. I have 15 houses and no bank mortgages on them. I love it. I love it. I love everything real estate. You can listen to my radio show 98, on 98.7 in Knoxville. Uh, it's News Talk. Uh, my show is called All Real Estate All the Time. It's Saturday mornings from 6 to 7. And... Y'all read all these books, all of these books. Some of these are just my notebooks, um, but it's all my notebooks on being a Proverbs 31 woman because that's the biggest, you know, hashtag. Everybody wants to be a Proverbs 31 woman. Be a real estate investor. Proverbs 31, 16 is my favorite verse. She goes to inspect a field and she buys it. And I want you to go inspect a field and buy it. I want you to go inspect a house and buy it. I want you to go inspect an apartment complex, a, a self-storage unit, an industrial warehouse. I want you to go inspect every piece of real estate you can. And I want you to put an offer in on every single one of them. And you're going to bomb. And you're going to hug my neck when you see me. <laughs> All right. So if you have questions about me, it's WhitneyNicely.com and everything that I have is right there. You can email me info at WhitneyNicely.com and be sure to share this with all of your friends because they all need a real estate portfolio to build a real estate empire. That's all I've got. Thanks for being here today. Bye everybody.